Ellen DeGeneres versus Donald Trump. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. Now, that might be a celebrity death match that you would enjoy watching. Perhaps seeing as the nasty DeGeneres is pounded into the ground by Donald Trump or has her orc-like head torn off and booted into the audience. Then again, it might be that you would prefer Ellen DeGeneres to utilise her pseudo-kindness to defeat the orange tyrant. I suppose it all depends on where your politics lie. And that's the very point of this video, is in relation to the narcissist and politics. I've explained to you before that the political environment attracts narcissists because political power is an excellent means of controlling millions, if not hundreds of millions of people, drawing massive amounts of fuel, having access to lots of people to acquire character traits, and of course leads to residual benefits, such as access to legworks, access to secret information, utilisation of a facade, and money. But one thing that often proves divisive is where you get celebrities and famous individuals who start crapping on about politics. Some people have reservations about celebrities getting involved in charitable activity, but many people think to themselves, well, although I may not necessarily agree, I can understand why they would get involved, because they are a prominent and famous person, and therefore their involvement enables that particular charity to get more prominence. So, for instance, if Tom Hardy turns up at a dog shelter in East London, it gets some press. People who like Tom Hardy, all of those middle-aged housewives swooning over him, might be then prompted to make some donations to that particular dog shelter. And therefore, they all benefit. Tom Hardy gets some good publicity. He seen to be a nice guy. And at the same time, the dog shelter benefits from contributions. If you're not bothered about it, you just move on and you don't donate. Similarly, where a particular star, for instance, I noticed that Taylor Swift has made a $5 million donation in respect of those who are victims of the latest hurricane that has been tearing through Florida. We know, of course, that she is a greater narcissist, has done that for her own purposes, but ultimately, other than saying, well, she's a billionaire, so could she not have donated more? Most people would recognise, well, that's a good thing that she's done, irrespective of her motivation. So for famous people to become involved in charitable and philanthropic endeavours, although their motivation will vary dependent upon what type of person they are, as you know, where they are the narcissist, it's driven by the pursuit of the prime aims, where they're not a, non where they're not a narcissist, emotional empathy is more likely to prove the driver of the behaviour. There's one area where it becomes divisive, and that is celebrities getting involved in politics. The problem with this is that invariably you're going to get the support of one side of the argument and the dislike or even hatred of the other side of the argument. And therefore, it's not a particularly clever thing to do. You'd be better staying out of it, maintaining that your politics are private. If you wish to make a donation to a particular party, you're free to do so, but you can do so quietly. You can do it through means whereby it's not publicised. Lending your voice to a particular political party or a political issue is a surefire way to gain support from some individuals and then alienate plenty of other individuals. And you would think, therefore, that many celebrities would look at it and decide, well, you know what, I don't want to alienate half my audience, even though I might get the approval of the rest. I'll just stick to being a television star or being a pop star or being a famous author and writing really interesting books. I'll just do that. I won't get into politics. On the face of it, you think, well, that's a sensible thing to do, isn't it? Stick to what you're good at. Stick to what you're known for being famous for. Stick to writing those books, creating those screenplays, acting, being a sports person, being a great broadcaster or entertainer. So why is it then that certain celebrities feel the need to involve themselves in talking about politics. Well, in some instances, it might be that the individual 
has their empathic trait of justice trampled on, that they believe that the behaviour of a political opponent is so bad that they need to speak out about it. But even in those circumstances, it's often the case that those empathic individuals think, well, the better thing to do is just campaign quietly, not draw attention, not make politics an issue in relation to what I am. After all, I'm famous for children's books. I'm not famous for politics. But the main reason why so many celebrities get involved in politics is because they're narcissists. They can't keep their mouths shut. Their need to assert control over an audience and nullify a threat to control because of a countering view leads them to engage in behaviours which ultimately cause them to alienate half or more of an audience that turns against them and invariably can lead to them being presented with ridicule and more challenge. Rather than keep their mouths shut and deal with the matter quietly, the narcissist celebrity can't help because of their sense of entitlement, their need to utilise a platform, and need to make it all about them by wading into the political arena and most of the time, to use the technical phrase, they fuck it up. They fuck it up because they talk about something that they don't really understand. They talk about something that they don't have a lot of knowledge about. And you are invariably either at best going to get half the supporters going, woohoo, well done, and the other half going, well, I don't like you anymore. Or at worst, your own supporters saying, you shouldn't really get involved in politics. I like you for the pop singing that you engage in. I don't want you to be involved in politics. And then the other half then saying, I don't like you anymore. I'm never buying any of your records again. It invariably works against the narcissist. But of course, because the narcissist is focused on the here and the now, driven by their narcissism, they're not thinking about the collateral consequence of them diving in. They can't help but want to have that platform, whether it's making a political statement at one of their concerts, tweeting something political, getting behind a particular candidate, cozying up to them, hosting them on their show, whatever it might be. Now, of course, they are entitled to exercise their freedom of speech or freedom of expression, but it's not always a sensible thing to do for the reasons that I've outlined. And we have an example of this where narcissist Ellen DeGeneres decides she's going to deride presidential candidate Donald Trump. So what does she do? Well, as per Red State, which naturally will be Trump supporting, it states, there's a reason shut up and sing is a truism. Show business people are famous for their grandstanding on political issues they don't know anything about, or as I've explained more accurately, narcissist show business people are famous for doing that. One need look no further than the hurrah about climate to see that, not to mention the hypocrisy of show business people rushing off to climate conferences in a carbon spewing private jet, or perhaps a massive mega yacht. But once in a while, a comment jumps up and bites one of these people, and that's fun to see. The most recent one was Ellen DeGeneres, who made a jab at former, presidential, pre former President Donald Trump, implying he was anti-LGBT. The famous comedian posted some boilerplate LGBT agiprop Tuesday on her Instagram. It features a picture of what appears to be a young boy in drag queen style makeup with the words, you can't tell someone you love them and then vote for someone who will hurt them, written on his cheek. Accordingly, she recycles that to her 138, Instagram, 138 million Instagram followers. She does this wading in, stating this is beyond politics, it's about love and inclusion versus hate and violence. Exercising her facade, asserting control through social media, and of course directing a, a criticism at Donald Trump. But entertainingly, it backfires as a consequence of once again a celebrity wading into the political arena. The replies were, to put it bluntly, brutal. Ellen DeGeneres seems to have a common flaw in show business people. That is the assumption that if they are, one, rich and famous, and two, a member of a certain identifiable group, then it stands to reason that they should be the one to speak for every member of that group. More accurately, of course, this is the behaviour of the narcissist through character trait acquisition, acquisition and also 
a sense of entitlement, believing that not only do they speak on behalf of those people, that they ought to speak on behalf of those people. Yet there was plenty of challenge of fuel coming her way as people responded as follows. I'm gay and I'm voting for Trump. Do I hate myself? Absolutely not. Messages like these are what spreads hate. That had got 33,000 likes. As a lesbian, I had more under Trump. He's got my vote, reads another comment with 7,000 likes. Lesbian for Trump right here, baby. Another woman agreed. You can scroll and scroll and still not find a comment in support of DeGeneres' unhinged position. As one commentator noted, vote Trump seems to be the reoccurring theme here. Most of us know some gay people. The writer states, my wife and I have two friends, Vinny and Mike, who have been together for over 20 years. If you met them in public and engaged them in normal conversation, you would never know they were gay. They don't wear their sexuality on their sleeves. They don't primarily identify themselves by who they sleep with. They are just people. They live quietly. They put gas in their cars. They buy groceries. They pay their electric and gas bills. Like everyone else in the United States right now, they are concerned with how much all of this is costing them and how things were just a few short years ago. Most gay people are like this. Not pink or purple-haired, face-pierced nuts screeching at a gay pride parade. Most of them just live their lives, keeping their private lives private, like a lot of straight people do. Donald Trump, Ellen's comments notwithstanding, seems to understand this. On Tuesday, Trump reached out to a crowd showing why he's gaining support from quarters that have Democrats more than a little nervous. Where's gays for Trump? Trump asked the crowd at a campaign event Tuesday while a group off-camera cheered in response. You don't look gay, Trump responded playfully as the crowd erupted in laughter. Trump thinks about gay Americans like he does any other American. They're just normal people. Being gay doesn't mean you have to be a left-wing lunatic, fear-mongering with divisive tactics like Ellen, or normalising the weird fetish rituals that Democrats cheer on during Pride Month. You can simply look and act like everyone else and vote on your interests rather than identity. Ellen DeGeneres made a careless social media post and she got slam dunked. Most people don't identify themselves by any one characteristic. Most people don't feel the need to parade their sex lives in public. And most people don't care to hear about other people's sex lives, whether they be straight, gay or anyone else. Most people prefer just to be treated like people. Donald Trump seems to get that. Ellen DeGeneres sure doesn't. Now, naturally, this piece is going to be supportive of Donald Trump. After all, it comes from Red State. But it still makes the accurate observation about Ellen DeGeneres and that sense of entitlement to make a comment as a celebrity and wade into politics and how, as always, it backfires. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.